Friends, welcome to this daily devotion. I'm Pastor Mark, and I have the privilege of serving the United Methodist Church of the Frankfurt, Mokina, and New Lenox areas. I ask that you come to this time with an open heart and an open mind. Ready yourself that we may truly come into the presence of God and leave transformed as people living in abundant life. Friends, hear this affirmation. Come to me, all of you who are struggling hard and carrying heavy loads. I will give you rest. Put on my yoke and learn from me. I'm gentle and humble, and you will find rest for yourselves. My yoke is easy to bear, and my burden is light. Matthew eleven twenty eight through 30 Take a moment. Breathe. Center yourself. Focus fully on this moment. Let us gather in an attitude of prayer. Dearest Lord, you have gently fashioned each one of us in your loving image. May we delight in your word and meditate on your precepts every day with great joy. And may those who see us see your gentle love. Amen. Friends, our theme this week is gentleness. The gentleness we should express to each other and the gentleness in the way we express love and correcting, guidance, parenting, relationship, friendship, marriage, teaching, fighting for justice, mercy, is gentleness guiding us. And also the gentleness we recognize from God because we don't always recognize God as gentle. Depending on your experience or your upbringing especially, you may have an image of God that is anything but gentle. So can you recapture that? Our reading today comes from uh, the third editor uh, of our work. We've heard from Reuben Job and Norman Chachuk today from John S. McGabgap. What do you want? John 138. Here's the question that searches the depths of human existence, asked by the one who knows those depths as no other. The disciples of John the Baptist, to whom Jesus addressed these words, must have felt their enormous spiritual resonance. These were followers of the desert prophet, seekers who surely knew the sweet anguish of holy desire, inflaming muscle and bone, imagination and will. Could they have been unfamiliar with desire's insistent prodding, its magnetic draw upon energy and attention? And you, surely you are not a stranger to the bold quest of desire for what alone will satisfy its ardent longing. What do you want? A vast arc of desire stretches across human existence, a long sweep of mutual longing between creator and creature that constitutes the innermost dynamism of history. Where are you, calls a god to a hiding Adam and Eve. Where do you live, asks John disciples when they encounter the Son of God. Expressed in the disciples' words are the many urgent, bewildered, painful questions concerning the whereabouts of God in a harsh world. And to those words, in their simplicity and gravity, Jesus responds with the great invitation to all who seek, Come and see. 
Come, Jesus says, calling us to step away from personal attitudes, cultural values, even religious convictions that hinder the recognition of God who is closer than we think. How God must cherish our company to number the hairs of our head and decipher the articulate groanings of our soul. And if indeed God is sometimes hidden, it is not to deny our desire for God's presence, but to hollow and intensify it. Freshly roused thirst for God may precisely be the way we discover the invitation to come and see. Encouraging words from John McGabgab today. Reminding us that God's invitation is always before us. Jesus rarely says, do these five things. Jesus rarely gives simple answers. Sometimes he does. Or sometimes he affirms answers. He does offer commands, after all, many commands that all sounds something like love God. Love your brother and sister. Love your neighbor. Love your enemy. Love those who hurt you. Love each other. He offers those commands. But more than not, he ask questions. More than not, he says, come, follow me. Come, I will make you fishers of people. Come, join me at the table. Come and see. And often we would just rather have the answers. Jesus asks hundreds of questions of the people around him. Even when they ask him questions, he offers questions in return and tells stories and parables and offers himself in a way that's not often harsh, not often judgmental, not often hurtful, but is often gentle, kind. It's patient, even in the midst of frustration. It's gentle, even in the midst of humiliation, betrayal, torture. It's humble, even in the midst of power, the power we know Christ has. Do we really live like Christ? Do we really respond in that same gentle way? And are we really ready to come and see? Because sometimes what appears before us in our search for God is very different than what we assume, what we've been taught, even what we believe. And that can be jarring. That can lead to deconstruction. But the hope is it will lead to reconstruction. It will lead to resurrection. Something new. For we worship a God who makes things new. Our scripture today comes from John chapter 1. This is the passage that was referenced in our reading today. The next day, John was standing again with two of his disciples. When he saw Jesus walking along, John said, Look, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard what he had said, and they followed Jesus. 
What are you looking for? Jesus turned around and asked them. They said, Rabbi, which translated teacher, what are you, where are you staying? He replied, come and see. So they went and saw where he was staying and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. story of two early disciples, one of whom was Andrew, Peter's brother. It's a beautiful invitation. Now, they didn't recognize him immediately. They had to be, and I think this is interesting, they had to have him pointed out. John, Jesus' cousin, John the Baptist, he had just baptized Jesus. And John had his own followers, his own disciples, but John knew that his time and his mission had been fulfilled. And so he pointed his disciples, his followers, to Christ, who would point his followers to God. And we're called to do the same thing. The Lamb of God. Again, not the king of kings in this passage, and I'm not saying Jesus isn't the king of kings, Jesus is Lord. That's a whole other situation, but John doesn't say that. He doesn't say, look, here's the new king. Look, here's the ruler. Look, here's the warrior. Look, here's, he says, the lamb of God. Gentle. Vulnerable. Perhaps ready to be sacrificed. That's all another deviation we can go down. And Jesus calls them to come and see, and, and they do, and that starts the journey. And when we talk about how we share our faith and how we share our story, how we get people to go to church, it, it, it's not programs. It's not, it's not some magic bullet. It's not some thing you sign up for. It's, it's come and see. If your faith, if your church, if your community is, is worth seeing, then it's worth inviting people to. And if we're gentle enough, if we're authentic enough, if we're real enough, people will want to be part of that because they want to see what it is that's going on. So capture that. Be willing to follow Jesus wherever he's leading, but also be willing to invite others to come and see. Friends, today we come with our petitions. It's okay to ask God for what you need, for what your heart is desiring, longing for. Spend a moment of silence, requesting what your heart truly needs. And if you don't know, requesting the wisdom and strength to realize what deep inside your heart is truly longing for. Let us pray the prayer that Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, I leave you with these words from John Wesley. O Lord, may nothing dwell in my soul but your pure love alone, till my every thought, word, and act be love. Yes, Lord, may your love possess me whole. You're my joy, my treasure, my crown. Until next time, friends, God bless. Goodbye. Amen.